refuse, absolutely refuse the double standard. We have this that is good for treating tuberculosis in Africa. However, don't try in Europe because it's not efficient enough. Isn't it? And we create resistance that harm our people. That harm even public health globally. So apply the global standard at home and refuse the double standard. Nobody will ever convince me of anything like the demographic dividend. I do not believe in that. I do not believe in things that you cannot have a control on. It doesn't work. For as long as governments will be devoting, dedicating more than 70% of their resources to satisfy the basic needs of the population, you are going, we are going to have issues with growth, with development. You need to provide them those basic services because you are not going to say, I'm going to provide to half of them and the other half will be left out. The only term of the equation you can work on is the other one, the number. So we need to do something about that. And one way to probably address the issue is to work hard on education, especially education of girls. Let us give to girls the choice to go to school or to get married. You have collaboration between the central level and the decentralized level, but also between sectors. The health sector can do nothing if there is no road that allows people to come and get care. We can do nothing if there is no peace and security. We can do nothing if the workforce will not be replaced, educated, even if this country is stealing them. We need education, transport, security organ, gender and family working together to build the health sector. The biggest risk we have is doing nothing. And whatever you do, never wait sustainability to save life, but always have sustainability in mind when you bring something new. Meaning create the room for this to be sustainable, but also create the room for this to be equitably distributed. When, you know, if you think about poverty, right, when you think about poverty, when you see it, uh, it has a way of displaying itself as a lack of resources. So you go into a poor community, there's a lack of water, a lack of schools, a lack of roads, a lack of good governance. It's just a severe lack of stuff. And so our natural sort of visceral human response is, let me fill the gap, let me provide stuff so that these people, the situation, they're, they're no longer going to be poor. And so we push resources onto the problem. Uh, but almost always, you fix it temporarily, but you never quite get the engine of prosperity going. The way to fix poverty is really not by trying to fix poverty, which is a bit counterintuitive. Um, really, the way to fix it is to focus entirely on something different, and that's creating prosperity, having a different set of goals and metrics. And when that happens, you find that the decisions and the questions you ask yourself, the decisions you have to make, are entirely different than focusing on poverty. Given the current demographic trend in Africa, every country will need to generate more revenues, more jobs, accelerate growth, while preserving our environment. This is a call to forge a new alliance that has until now failed to materialize in the rest of the world. The same way 
Africa has experienced a leapfrog in the telecom and digital sectors, I'm convinced that Africa can be at the forefront of this evolution. We collectively have to do something here, and I'm sure this pool of young, talented people in front of me will be instrumental in the process. Thank you. Oh yeah, 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 oh y